We've got a cat on the hunt. That see, even the cats like will like it in here. Squirrel hunting. See, there's there's like six in that tree right now. There's one running across that way. <laughs> I ain't got time to swap the lenses around, but. Uh, <laughs> This is why I love this place. Absolutely heaving with squirrels everywhere you go. <laughs> oh. Bit of a down day at uh, Move It Media today, so, uh, well, that and I'm not very well, to be honest, in here the last couple of days, so. Uh, rare kind of day of not doing much but we have had a lot of uh, gearing and stuff to test so i'm going to do that today um including these the uh, rode uh video wireless go i think they are um well these things uh these things here pretty cool um i'm going to test that in a minute at the moment we've got the uh video micro on top of the uh camera but we're also testing out the uh switch pod uh which a bit of teething issues at first, which the guys down at SwitchPod are absolutely amazing. They are... Caleb, if you're watching this... Thank you, sir. Um, I was dealing with Caleb, um, the, you might know him from YouTube. Um, I was dealing with him directly and he couldn't be nicer, so fair play to them. Um, but we're testing that out today and yeah, we're gonna see um, if these things are any good and if it's any better than the video micro that most you know, fellow YouTubers and everybody uses. But um, I also, um, I'm also helping out a friend. And hopefully while helping them out, I'm helping you out too, so. So yeah, my, my mate Stephen, he's uh, got to shoot a dog running event. Um, I think this week. Um, and he was just asking for, my, for advice. He's a fellow drone pilot and a, and a videographer and things. And it just got me thinking. I might as well tell you guys how to do it as well, or at least my opinion on how to do it, and uh, hopefully it helps you in a similar situation. So, um, yeah, rule one. Be prepared. Plan ahead. Do your damn research. Um, cannot emphasise this enough, to be honest. Um, Especially where there's crowds involved, especially where you are going to be flying a drone. Um, in the UK at least, uh, the laws are very, very strict over what you can and can't do. Side note actually, um, if you are getting paid in any way for filming an event or a grabbing of people, whether that be money, whether that be a mate buying you a beer, anything of value, you need to have a PIFCO. If you do not have a PIFCO, or some kind of permission from the CAA, you should not be flying a drone at all. Again, in exchange for money. Um, if it's just like some mates at a barbecue or something, then yeah, you can do that as a, as a thing, but obviously no money must change hands for said video. And none of this that I've heard before, oh well, they paid me for the photos of a wedding, but they're not paying me for the drone, so technically I don't have to. No, you need to have a PIFCO. You need to have the right licenses, you need to have the right insurance, the right indemnity insurance and everything else involved that comes with flying, you know, a dangerous thing in the air. Same goes for video as well. Um, are your batteries charged? Um, do you know the area? Have you done a little recce of the area do you know, if you don't know it? Um, where's the sun going to come up? Where's it going to go down? Where's it going to be highest? Because uh, obviously any of you video guys will know um, it's not so bad right now. This is great. Winter, it's really cloudy right now. I mean, it's not overexposing the skylight right here. It's just a massive cloud in England. It's great for that because it obviously gives you that even light across your face. But if it's the middle of the summer, um, noon, don't even bother unless you've got some very strong ND filters, which are ne neutral density filters. Um, like these things. Basically, sunglasses for your lens. Those things. You want to be filming, you know, if you can, if you can control these things in the morning, in the evening, you know, towards the end of the evening is the best uh, light. If you can't and it's like a big public event, 
then you just have to make do. Um, film while studying shade, film with the sun behind you rather than behind this subject because if you're stood here and the sun's over here and you're filming someone, say the camera is a person, they're going to be like squinting and can't see anything the sun's right in their eyes, you know, stuff like that. So no way your sun's going to be. Think of things like comfortable walking shoes, changes of socks, changes of underwear, changes of jeans because if you're walking through the mountains and you get wet legs there's nothing worse than not being able to get changed you know walking around in wet clothes so stuff like that make sure your batteries are charged your microphones are charged and if you're a drone pilot make sure you've done all the research and all the paperwork needed and speaking of preparation I'll come on to the drones a bit in a, in a second let's try out these uh, road video mics and see if they sound any better because now you've got an idea what the uh, video micro sounds like I think number two should be with the new microphone. What do you think? Yeah? Nice. Okay. Right, so here's the setting at the moment. So, you know, standard YouTube affair, Gorilla Pod, or in this case, a, uh, a Switch Pod. Um, but it, you know, obviously, quite, even with a video micro, it looks a bit, you know, conspicuous. Um, a couple of people walk past and kind of staring at me. Like, what are you doing, you? It's like, oh, God, I'm trying to figure out, Gary. So let's uh, put this on because. If this works, all we'll have is that on the hot shoe. And it doesn't even technically need to go on the hot shoe. There's a clip there. You can clip it anywhere on your thing. But yeah, we'll put that on the hot shoe and we've got another one uh, for me to wear. And that's this one. And I've already put a little wind muff. You get little wind muffs in there. But you can also plug in, um, if I take the wind muff off, that's what it looks like without the wind muff. And um, you can also plug in any lavalier mic into the top there. So, yeah. Let's give it a go. Ooh, now we're talking. That's a lot more compact. Okay, let's see what it sounds like. I think all we need to do is hold that down for three seconds. So do that. One, two, three. Yeah, there we go. And that'll sync up with what I'm wearing right now. Let's see what this is like, shall we? Um, come to one of my local pubs, um, you know for half also when you're vlogging outside people stare at you and i'm not used to that yet um yeah i'm not that keen now what, one thing this road road i've noticed is it's a lot more slimmer profile but i can't see the monitors because when it's on the hot shoe so i'm thinking if we're vlogging ourselves maybe we can just clip it down here yeah here we go so we can just clip this onto the switch pod, maybe onto this leg. There we go. And then we can see, I can see I'm clipping there. So that's, that means I'm a bit too close to myself even. That's crazy. Okay, let's try that. Nice. Oh, I like that. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, so um, pole up there. Um, do we like the top mount with shotgun or do we like the video micro it's good the one thing i've noticed is we've got these little wind muffs on them but uh they're a bit crap they fall off like in three seconds they don't clip on or anything they just kind of friction go on and they're a bit meh. anyway what was i saying rule two um especially with crowds when we're talking about drones basically avoid crowds at all costs. Um, the, the, the law is relatively specific as it is right now, but the, the law is changing in July. So there, this is subject to change depending on when you read, when you read this, watch this even. Um, but at the moment, um, you must be 50 meters, at least 50 meters away from any persons, objects, vehicles, uh, roads, train lines whatever outside of your direct control so if you're with a group of friends they all know you've got a drone up that's fine you can fly in the faces if you want although i wouldn't advise it um but if you're in an open air event like my friend steven is matt laps maybe you are do not under any circumstances fly a drone anywhere near the place it's basically 50 meters from a small gathering of people uh, for example, a beach or something like that. It's also 50 meters from a not so built up area. So buildings, factories, whatever, you know, country pubs, unless they know you're flying, of course. But it's 150 meters 
from built up, very built up areas, so the middle of a town, the middle of a city, and also 150 meters from large from large gatherings, which at the moment the CAA are saying it's a thousand, around about a thousand people or more. Now. Stephen, for you who's watching this, I don't know how big your um, your gathering is, but if it's a thousand people, and if you haven't got a PIFCO, you need to be 150 meters away. Now you can, with a PIFCO, with a license, with a license, it's not really called a license, it's called a permission from the CAA, but people know the word license, so let's just say that. Um, at the moment on my um, permissions, I can go, I can take off and land only, 30 meters away and that's when I'm taking off and when I'm landing which gives me a bit closer you know if, if I'm in a restricted area that say you know you can only fly a drone from there and it's and it's 32 meters away from where the crowd are that's fine as long as I immediately pull back to 150. Now there are exemptions on the submissions and additional sort of notes on there like I have a friend who I, I um, help out on his jobs and, and he can go within five meters but that is like a lot more training and things like that and I've not done any of the additional stuff because I'm a film cinematographer so we are always on close sets surrounded by people who know there's going to be a drone in the air and therefore they are all under my direct control we're all on radios and we can communicate with everyone and all the crew and the cast and everything so I don't need those permissions those extra permissions because of what I do but for say you're a wedding videographer or something like that yeah okay you can fly over the crowd if they if you make sure you brief them and give them health and safety and all that kind of stuff say you're at a wedding um and there's i don't know a business conference going on in the same hotel under it's 50 meters away depending on how many people are there if it's a thousand people which let's face it a wedding and a business conference probably will be 150 meters away you know stuff like that you've got to think about these things hence one and less than one and two are linked make sure you plan ahead the day before a couple of days before because especially on the drone side of things if you're taking off and landing on private land you need to get the permission of the person that owns that land to actually take off and land on there it's it's a whole thing i'm going to link in in the description below i'm not going to go too too preachy with it but there's your basic things um i really suggest you look up the drone code in the UK and go on the CAA website. The CAA website is a little bit technical sometimes so if you go to NATS that's a good one. That's kind of part of the CAA so therefore they can give you a more digestible version of the drone code and the rules and, and, pict and it's very pictorial so it helps you get your head around it. And then if it's after July you definitely need to retrain yourself because Again, different for current PIFCO holders, but it's all going to change. The permission structure is going to change and, and the, the rules are going to change and things. But um, we'll have things like what I think they call it grandparent rules where your, your PIFCO is still valid and under the same things and a few changes in there. Again, that's a whole nother video. But um, at the moment, I believe it's the same for people who don't have the training, you know, just just people who just fly for fun and things the 50 meter rule for example is like a bubble around your drone so this is your drone hopefully i can do this as a pictorial thing so if i do that this is your drone and then it's basically a bubble a 50 meter bubble and nothing can enter that bubble like a building or a person or a car or a train whatever and so if that bubble is up up above is it, uh, at the bottom of that bubble is 60 meters away technically you, you should be fine However, I've always flown, and this is how I was taught on my initial PIFCO course. Yes, the bulb thing's there, but it's much better to treat it as a cylinder like the bottom of your beer glass going up. So if this if this is 50 meters, you're, and it goes straight up from the ground, right up to space, you cannot go inside that glass. And that's probably the best way of thinking of it, because that way you know that you are within the law and you know mm. like this beer in my belly the people around you and yourself are going to be safe right tip number three film your establishing shots if you can on a different day 
What do I mean by that? So you're establishing shots in a movie are like the big wide landscapey type shots that, that you see that kind of tell the audience where they are um, and what's around the, the, your subject, which in Mark's case is going to be the runners. In other cases, it might be, if you're on a film, your, your main talents and, and where they are. Especially on a big event, uh, when you're filming these things, it can be very, very quick paced and stressful. So, if you can go on there and all you're doing is, is concentrating on getting pictures of runners or dog walkers or whatever it is you're filming, and then you can come back the next day or go a couple of days beforehand maybe, um, Usually on like a big running event, for example, I did one once where um, we knew that all the tents and the event stuff and the stage and stuff was all going to be set up the day before. So we'd go the day before, have a word with the event organisers and say, OK, well, do you mind if we take some establishing shots of the site while there's no one there? using the drone because it's a lot safer because there's not as many people around there. Yeah, that's brilliant. Just, just make sure you're taking off online between these two times and we'll say on the radio, brilliant, you know, away you go. So yeah, again, it all comes back to that tip number one, your planning. If you've been asked last second to do it, fine, you know, film your people, make sure you've got all, you know, film more than you need, make sure you've got what shots you think you, you, you might need for the little video you've got in your head. And then once uh, all that's done, then walk around the site or around the field or around the course of the person where the people are running, whatever, and do your big wide establishing shots. Um, like on the one that Jane did, um, this, that wasn't um, a pay thing by us. I was just there supporting my wife and, and uh, the group she was with like, oh, let's, film, let's do a film little thing. Okay, let's do that. So what do we do? Didn't get the drone out because obviously I was literally asked on the on the day while I was there. I filmed this, I filmed basically the start and people walking past. Hey, let's go! Hey, you know, start, start, start. I then hightailed it in the car to halfway around the course. It was a 25k course, so obviously I had time to do this. 25k course. I went round to where I knew would be a cool establishing shot, which in this case was Lady Bower Dam. Um, I looked upon the various various apps that us uh, professional pilots use, and and saw that you know there was an area that was safe to take off from, and and you'd have permissions and all, all that in place, and phone phone a phone number. Oh, do you mind if I send the, just a small little? I just sent the the Mavic Air up, you know. Oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no one there. Sent it. I've got those establishing shots of of the dam while I was waiting for the people to come round. Landed, packed away, made safe, got my camera back out. The, the people started arriving at the dam, taking some establishing shots of that, interviewed my wife, you know, walking along, backwards along the dam. You might have saw that on my, on my video once that was done. Got back in the car, hightailed it back to the, um, the start finish line. Got some establishing shots, the ones you saw at the beginning of the video, those ones of the flags and everything else like that. That was done while there was no one there. You know, um, some shots of the tent, uh, establishing shots of, of, of people, you know, workers walking around and things like that. Um, did that, I packed away, had a jolly good time, I had a brew, everyone started coming back, got the camera out, filmed, filmed the finish. Away you go. You don't have to film things in the order that you're going to edit them in. I mean, it helps, it comes down on editing time, agreed, but TV and film, you never shoot in the order that the script is unless it's like a shot as live project, but you, you can shoot in different orders, you can shoot in different days. It doesn't matter as long as you get the shots that you think you might want. So again, with a little bit of forethought and a little bit of planning or a little bit of creativity on your, on your part of, of filling in the gaps in between the main shooting sections, you can get some nice establishing shots without having to sacrifice, um, you know, meeting the main talents, which in this case would be dog walkers or runners or something like that. So yeah, there you go. Film establishing shots a different day or, you know, in between the, the, the main events happening. Okay, so the next point is be a ninja at the start and a reporter at the end. What do we mean by that? Well, well, in the case of our running example, the people who are at these um, events are not there for your benefit to, 
you know, make a video. They are there to run or walk a dog or ride a horse, whatever it is. They're not thinking about looking good for the camera. And the last thing they want when they're trying to set themselves up for a very big event like a walking marathon or whatever it is, is someone just sticking a camera in their face. What do we do? Well, we go back to the example I gave you back in the pub there, that um, you turn up, you be as inconspicuous as possible without looking creepy, you know, don't like hiding a bush or anything, that's just weird, and get your nice sexy b-roll shots and things of people, you know, putting their shoes on, you know, putting their backpacks on, uh, standing at the line and letting them, three, two, one, beep, and they're all crossing the line, that kind of a thing. And you don't bother anyone, and just accept that they're there for a different reason that, you, that you're there for. Then, once the event's over, you can then go and, uh, you know, go and interview people. How was it for you? Did you enjoy it? What was the hardest part? You know, that kind of stuff. And you'll find people, because they've got all the adrenaline in them and they've enjoyed themselves, are usually a lot, give a lot much better interview to when it's at the beginning and they're nervous and they're trying to set themselves up and all that. So, and I found that time and time again when I've been helping friends out or, you know, doing a, doing some voluntary work for a charity and they happen to have some people doing a marathon or something, you know, you interview them afterwards and they're a lot happier, they're happier to see you. And I don't mean like as they cross the line, unless you're like uh, broadcast media, of course. Then, you know, grab them in the coffee tent or whatever it is, you know, and make a fuss of them, show, tell them how much you respect them, and then they're, they're more likely to want to talk to you. And if they don't want to talk to you, obviously respect that. So yeah, be a ninja at the start and a reporter at the end. Check that out for a natural bat hair light. <laughs> Shame I'm going hair, really. And uh, this next tip rolls on from the last one. B-roll is king. And yes, I know, you know, B-roll um, is overdone on YouTube, especially here on YouTube with the likes of the wonderful Pete McKinnon and Matt Abuya and all that lot. But in an event like that, where there's lots of people that you don't really know, B-roll is probably the best way to do things. Um, just lots and lots of B-roll, shoot lots of things. Um, as I've been describing it through this whole video, um, because then you're less likely to come up against someone who's like, oh, don't put a camera in my face, me, me. So lots of B-roll. If you can do slow motion, yes, I know it's overdone, but you know, nice slow motion. People, especially on events when they're running and things, they do a lot better in slow motion. So 120p if you've got it, or 60p if you haven't. Um, like my vlogging camera here only does 60, so 60 is fine. That, that's two and a half times slower. So if you're shooting, a, if you're doing a 24p timeline, well, that's a bit less than two and a half, but you get the point. You can basically slow it down by 50%. It just adds that little filmic kind of thing to it, especially when you've got to edit lots of different shots of random people. It just helps. Um, of course, all needs to be done to some good background music. I'd recommend Techno Axe over on YouTube. Just uh, T-E-K-N-O-X. He has lots of different genres um, and he lets you download licenses to use for commercial purposes and things like that. But you can, there are paid servers out there. A lot of the YouTubers out there, um, you know, do use them and work with those people. Um, I personally don't. Um, I have been approached back in the day when I had a few million on my channel, but you know, the, the problem with it is that you have to keep your subscription up. Um, I think they might have changed, but back, back when I was being offered, you have to, um, you know, keep your subscription up because then if, say, you cancel it 10 years later and your video's on YouTube and it's still doing well, you, you, you haven't got a license for the music anymore. So I'd sooner have someone who is an individual artist. Um, that's how I roll. Um, and of course I support those artists like Techno Axe and there's a couple of others out there. Um, 
you can support them by giving them a Patreon, you know, like a monthly payment, which is basically what I do. And then that way you've got a personal relationship with that person and, you know, they're never going to, you know, suddenly turn around and say, oh no, you need royalties for this now. You know what I mean? So, yeah, keep it to the B-roll. Because if you can't get any interviews with people, then at least if you've got some footage, you know, with a long lens from across the room of, you know, people all sat around the table at the end having a, having a brew going, hey, pat each other on the back, you know, smiling, you know, think about facial expressions, think about the human connection, just like we're doing films and TV. So, you know, show people happy that they've finished, show people with medals around there, around them if they're giving out medals, you know, um, congratulating the horses, what, you know, whatever that is, you know, use your imagination um, and you can usually make a very nice looking video that has that emotional connection and your client who's asked for it is going to connect with that more because um, they're going to have that, that personal connection and therefore you look better. Right, I'm going to watch the last of this sunset I think and then we'll go back to the studio and uh, I'll give you the, the last bonus tip if you will. Just tip number six, you know. Have you have you noticed the uh, thing yet? Six letters in my name, move it. Six tips, you know, because I'm because I'm special like that. Anyway, sunset aroma. What do you think, Rory? What do you think, Rory? Should we go back to the office now? No, no. Are you cold? Oh yeah. Do you want to go now then? Okay then, mate. And we're back. Um, so yeah, last tip in my little notepad of tricks here, keep it simple. Which is ironic since this video is probably going to be about 20 odd minutes long, but uh, you know, I want to give some details, but you can skip to the bits that you actually wanted to do. Um, but I hope by going through all these things, it's given you some ideas on how to keep it simple and how to effectively get the shots you need. So basically, film to a structure, and that structure is, is quite simple. I'll put it up here. So you've got your establishing shots, show people where they are, what's around them, that kind of a thing. Getting ready, um, putting their shoes on, putting the saddles on the horse, whatever it is. The actual start of the events, whether that be the start of a race, or people leading their horses onto a... Onto a arena floor or something like that. A middle section if possible, and that's it if possible because it depends on the event, so that can be anything that involves events, so horses going over jumps, um, runners going around a track, that kind of a thing. And then the ending of say the race, people coming over the finish line, you know, b-roll of that, and then right at the end the human element, the whole ninja versus reporter thing, so if you're going to interview someone stick that in at the end. How was it for you? Is this a good achievement for you? Do you have any messages for the people at home? That kind of a thing. Yeah, just keep it nice and simple with those kind of key points. And you can't really go wrong, I don't think. But anyway, hopefully that was really helpful for you. Um, let me know what you think uh, or if, of the new sort of format of me going delving more deeply into cinematography and videography, giving you tips and advice and share my experiences and the experiences of the team reflector right here. Also let me know what you think of these mics. So um, normally I've got a shotgun mic just above my head, but now uh, I'm using this. Let me know if this sounds any better. Um, I do know there's an echo in the studio at the moment. Um, I'm gonna work on that. I need to put some sound dampening panels and the ceiling and the wall behind where the camera is and things. So that should be a bit better for you. But that'll have to come on another video. In the meantime, thanks for watching. And until next time, do no harm. Don't be a dick. And I'll see you in the next video. Tira. I like to move it, move it, fit, fit, fit.